All right, so in this video, I'm going to do some series examples. Basically, these are all going to apply to geometric series. So again, the question is going to be, does it converge or diverge? And if it converges, we'll say to what value? So suppose my first series is 1 plus 0.4 plus 0.16 plus 0 0.064. We'll assume this pattern continues. Notice the number I'm multiplying by. It's pretty, pretty easy to spot on the first one. It looks like I'm multiplying by 0.4. And notice if I multiply 0.4 by 0.4, again, I'll get 0.16. I'm multiplying 0.16 by 0.4. I'm going to get 0 0.064. So this 0.4 is going to be my common ratio R. And if I wanted to, well, let's just stop there. There's no point really in rewriting it with a summation. It says this is going to converge because remember it says if this number R, it says if R is between negative 1 and positive 1, it does converge. Well. 0.4 is certainly in this interval, and it's going to converge to the first term. Well, here's the first term that gets spit, spit out. 1 over 1 minus 0.4. Remember, you take the first term over always 1 minus the common ratio. Well, this is 1 over 0.6. 1 minus 0.4 is 0.6. I can write 0.6 as 6 tenths. That's 10 sixths if I flip it and that's equivalent to 5 thirds, which is 1 and 2 thirds, which is 1.6 repeating. So the idea is if I keep adding up these numbers, infinitely many of them, I'm going to get as close as I want to to the number 1.6 repeating. So yes, this is a convergent geometric series. Let's look at another one here. Suppose I have, let's look at, let's just make one up. Suppose I have n equals 3 to infinity. And let's make it 5 times 2 thirds, say to the, um, how about, n minus 1. Okay, so again, I look at this and I think, okay, 2 thirds, I've got a number raised to a variable power. This clues me in that it's a geometric series. Again, this number, 2 thirds, is between positive 1 and negative 1. So that means it is going to converge. And if you just automatically said, oh, 5 is my first term, over 1 minus 2 thirds, that's actually going to be incorrect in this problem. Okay, That's why I think sometimes when they write this a over 1 minus r stuff, they'll usually write the geometric series starting at n equals 1. And notice in this case my n is 3. Well, what is the first term? The first term is simply going to be the first number that gets spit out when you plug in the first um, number where your series starts. So in this case, if I plug in n equals 3, I'm going to get 5 times 2 thirds raised to the 3 minus 1. Well, 3 minus 1, that's 2 thirds squared. 2 thirds squared, that's 4 ninths. So I'll get 5 times 4 ninths. I'll get 20 over 9. And this is now my first term of this series. So this series, again, definitely does converge. But it's not going to converge to this number. It's going to converge to 20 divided by 9 over 1 minus the common ratio, 2 thirds. And I'll let you simplify that one down. I don't feel like doing that one. Um, but this is the basic idea. To get the first term, simply plug in wherever the index is starting into your formula, and whatever you get out, well, that's your first term. 
clearly if I started this at 1 or at 2 or, or at a billion, I'm going to get a much different first term in all of those cases. So that's the idea on how to get your first term. So again, just be careful. This could be, you know, 20n. Well, we don't want to use 20n. Uh, maybe I've got n, just plain old n to the n power. Again, then my first term is going to be a little bit different. If I don't have the minus 1, I'll get 5 times 2 thirds cubed, and that's going to give me a very different first term than 20 over 9. So just be careful about that. Let's see, let's find another example here. So again, suppose we want to know, does it converge or diverge? Suppose I have n equals 1 to infinity. Suppose I have pi raised to the n over 3 raised to the n plus 2 power. Well, in this case, I'm going to try to make it look more like a geometric series. So I want a single number raised to a power. I'm going to write, so I've still got pi to the n on top. I'm going to write this as 3 to the n times 3 squared. Okay, right? Again, I've got like bases. If I add up the exponents, I'll get n plus 2. I can pull the 3 squared out front, the 1 over 3 squared. That'll give me 1 ninth, so I'm getting rid of the the 3 squared here, and I'm left with the series from n equals 1 to infinity, and I've, so I've pulled out the 3 squared. I've now got pi to the n over 3 to the n, so I can write that as pi over 3 to the n. So again, I now see a number raised to a variable power. Does this converge or diverge? Well, we have to think about our common ratio. Definitely pi over 3 is bigger than 1. And remember, our common ratio inside of here has to be between negative 1 and positive 1 to converge. Well, since this number falls outside of that interval, we can conclude that this is a divergent geometric series. Okay, So obviously, we don't have to do the first term over 1 minus the common ratio because it's simply, simply not going to converge at all. Do two more here. Suppose I have the series n equals 1 to infinity of, let's say, n squared over 2n squared minus 1. So the first thing when I see this is this looks like almost to me like a limit problem. I'm so used to seeing those rational functions, polynomial on top and polynomial on the bottom. And notice if you take the limit of this, the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared over 2n squared minus 1, well, this limit, you can either divide everything through by n squared. There's that little trick if the highest power on top is the same as the highest power on the bottom. We can just take the ratio of their coefficients, and that will be my answer. Well, since the limit of this does not equal 0, we can conclude that this original series diverges by the test for divergence. And again, we're finished. So think about this little trick. It'll make so many problems so much easier for you. Again, if you're a little shaky with limits, um, my advice would be to go back and review limits. You've had to have seen limits before you've done sequences and series. Series are one of those things that are really tricky. Limits can be tricky as well, but you've certainly seen that stuff at least. And um, I think with a little practice, if you have gotten rusty on your limits, you can bring a lot of it back pretty quickly. Let's do one more example here for the road. Suppose I have this series, 3 to the n plus 2 to the n over 6 to the n. In this example, I'm just going to bust up my fraction. So I can write this.